Hello, options traders. Well, with all the volatility we've seen in the market here recently, I thought it would be a good time to talk a little bit about the multi dimensions that exist with an option. And I also thought it was timely because in the past seven to 10 days, we've had a number of people join the Facebook trading group here. So welcome to all of you new traders. But I always find that whenever we get new traders, people coming from the stock trading world into options, that probably the biggest trap that they step into is not understanding that options have multiple dimensions. In the past, I've said that there's a speed component to options, which is true. But today, let's take a little deeper look at direction, magnitude, and speed, understanding the dimensions of options. To understand why options have multi dimensions, it sometimes helps to take a step backwards and look at stock. If you are a stock trader, stock is a one dimensional asset. And what I mean by that is that it's just up or down. That's the only thing you need to predict when you're trading shares of stock, right? You think it's going higher, you buy the shares of stock. And if it goes up, regardless of by how much or by when, putting commissions aside, you're going to make money. If you think it's going to go down, you can short the shares. And regardless of how far it falls or by when, you're going to make money. So think we've got up, down, left, right, and front, back. We have three dimensions. But stock just operates in one of those. And unfortunately, when stock traders come into the options trading world, they carry this mindset in there, thinking it's how options work. And they say, well, I think the stock's going up, so let me go buy a call option. And I've got all these strikes. Why would I want to choose this expensive one down here? Let me get this cheap one over here because I just need the stock to go up. And that is absolutely wrong. But it is true that as an options trader, we do need to get the direction correct. But it's more than that. Options also need magnitude. So what in the world does this mean and where does it come from? Options have a time value, also called the extrinsic value. And because we're paying this time value, the expiration break even point is higher on your option than it is for shares of stock. So for example, let's say that you buy shares of stock for 100, you just need the stock price above 100 to make money. Again, putting commissions aside, the asset itself will start profiting for all stock prices above 100. But let's say that you buy the $100 call for $5. Now your expiration break even is 105. And we find that by just adding that $5 price to the $100 strike price. And again, that's because we need to make up that $5 price. It's almost like if you order something online for your business and you have to pay a $5 shipping charge, you're going to have to tack that on to that price. You've got to recoup that. And see, as a stock trader, you don't have a time value. So you start profiting right away. And because of this time value, it creates a magnitude dimension. And by that, I just mean that there is a size or a distance. It's not just about direction. It's got to be by a certain amount in order to be profitable. To understand this better, let's take a look at it graphically. So here I've got time on the horizontal axis and price on the vertical. So let's say the stock is currently trading for 100 and you buy shares of stock. If the stock is anywhere above this $100 price, you're profitable. Doesn't matter when and it doesn't matter by how much. You just have to be above 100. And if you're anywhere below 100, then you take a loss. And if the stock is exactly 100, you just break even. However, if you buy that $100 call for five, look what happens to your expiration break even. Now I want to emphasize this graph that we're looking at here only applies at expiration. And that means let's call it 3.59 PM Eastern time on expiration Friday, just seconds left on the options life. And that's important because you're going to find out at the end of this presentation, there are areas where we might be profitable. But for right now at expiration, we have a 105 break even. And that means we need the stock to be above 105 at expiration in order to profit. And that means there is this additional area of loss for the options trader that does not exist for the stock trader, right? If the stock is at 102, 103, all the way up to 105, the stock trader made money. Options trader didn't, provided we are right at expiration. In addition to that, however, options also need speed. 
We just saw that options have a time value which creates the magnitude dimension, but options also have an expiration date, and that creates the need for speed. We need a certain magnitude by a specific time. So therefore, options also need speed. That is the speed component. So if we go back to our graph here, and let's say that we need the stock to be above 105 at expiration in order to be profitable. However, if we have a cutoff date or an expiration date right here, then this area here becomes an additional area of loss because the stock might have gotten above 105, but it did it after the option expired. How many times have that happened to you? You bought an option, it expires worthless, or maybe you just took a loss on it, and then you find out, gosh, if I just had another week's worth of time, I would have made a lot of money. Doesn't matter. Once the option expires, anything in that upper right-hand corner there isn't going to count for you. Now, as a reminder, the stock trader will make money for any of these areas, anything above 100. But the options trader, at expiration, needs the stock to not only be above 105, but also by a certain date. So that's why we need direction, magnitude, and speed. However, it gets even more complicated than this. Take a look at this area right here between 100 and 105. Is it possible we could be profitable if the stock lands somewhere in this area? Yes, provided that it is an aggressive move and it happens quickly. So now you're going to see that magnitude and speed are really interrelated. We can become profitable with an option if we get a fast, aggressive move prior to expiration, even though it may not be at our break-even point. So for example, if the stock happens to land somewhere in this range, let's say 103 or 104, but it does it relatively quickly, yes, the option will be profitable at that moment. But if you continue holding it through expiration, it will then expire worthless. I know it can be confusing, but let's go over to the CBOEs, that's the Chicago Board Options Exchanges option pricing model, and see these concepts in action. All right, so here we are at the CBOE's option pricing calculator, and you can get there, probably the easiest, by just going to Google and typing CBOE option pricing calculator, and it should bring you to this page. But it's just an option pricing model that allows us to do some what-if scenarios. So I've chosen a stock price of 100, strike of 100, 30 days to expiration, and I've selected 43.75% volatility because that is the volatility necessary to create a $5 call option value, which is what I used in the example. So remember in the presentation, I said, if the stock is 105 at expiration, we would just break even. So here's why. Let's make the stock price 105, and I need to make the expiration date pretty much down to zero. This pricing model will only let you go down to one day left till expiration. But if I choose calculate here, you can see the option value is basically $5. So we paid five and we sell for five and we just break even. The reason is that when we bought the option, it was all extrinsic value, it was all time value. But when we get to expiration, if the stock is 105, we have $5 of intrinsic value. That's just the difference between the 105 stock price and the 100 strike. So all we've done is we've swapped $5 worth of time value for $5 worth of intrinsic value and that's why we just break even. But watch what happens if the stock price rises anything above this. Let's make this 106, and that means the options value would be $6 at expiration. We paid five, we sell for six, we made a profit. If the stock gets to, let's say, 110, the option would be worth $10. That's just the $10 worth of intrinsic value that's in the option. We paid five, we sold for 10, we actually doubled our money here. But the point is that we only make a profit at expiration if the stock is above our 105 break even. However, does that mean that we need the stock to ever be above 105 in order to profit? And the answer is not really. It depends on how quickly and aggressively that stock price moved because magnitude and speed are interrelated. So now we're back to our starting price with the option priced at $5. But let's say that it makes a fairly aggressive move fairly quickly. Remember, magnitude and speed are interrelated. We could still profit even though we never get to the 105 break even. 
So let's say the stock price rises to 103, but it does it after five days. So now there's only 25 days remaining until expiration. Click calculate. The option would be worth about $6.28. I paid five, I could sell for $6.28. But that's because the stock made a fairly fast, aggressive move. It was within a fairly short amount of time. What would happen if it took 10 days? In other words, there's 20 days remaining until expiration. I paid five, I could sell for $5.81. Now, a little bit of a profit there. What if there were only 13 days till expiration? Or in other words, 17 days have passed. Click calculate. Well, now I'm just gonna break even. I paid five, I can sell for five. Even though the stock price went up, it went up from 100 to 103, I still broke even because it didn't do it that aggressively. It took 17 days for it to happen. And in fact, if I continue holding and it never moves beyond 103, I go all the way to expiration, the option's just worth basically the $3 worth of intrinsic value. So there I would pay five, sell for three, and take about a 40% loss. But the point to understand is that just because the stock never gets to your expiration break even, such as here, if it does it fairly quickly, and aggressively, you could see a profit. But this is where you have to understand the art and science of options trading. You have to understand where that options value is coming from. Should we close it out? Well, if it's due to a fast, aggressive move and it's all extrinsic value, or largely extrinsic value, yeah, I might go ahead and consider closing that. If it's all intrinsic value, that's a different story. And of course, we can structure these positions from the get-go depending on what we think is going to happen. Do I think it's just going to go up or down? Or do I think it's going to go up or down aggressively? Or up or down aggressively in a short amount of time? I need to account for all of those depending on my strategy. So for everybody who's new, just understand that when you come from a stock trading background, you wanna get away from the up-down mentality. When you're dealing with options, it's much more difficult, and that's because options have direction, magnitude, and speed. Are there ways to control for that? Sure, that's where the art and science of options trading comes in. If you'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.